In the current global geopolitical context, contemporary forms of slavery seem to be increasing. Because of its strategic location, Mexico has become one of the main countries of origin, transit and destination for the sexual exploitation of women, girls and adolescents, although the Latin American and Caribbean region show similar trends. According to international organizations, trafficking in persons is the second most profitable business in the world after drug trafficking. The Regional Coalition Against Trafficking in Women and Girls in Latin America and the Caribbean is a non-profit civil organization with extensive experience in the topic of contemporary forms of slavery, including all the crimes related to trafficking in women and girls, in particular sexual exploitation, description of the attended population. According to the 2014 Statistical and Georeferenced Report, which systematizes all the cases attended by the CATLAC, most victims come from three types of socioeconomic backgrounds, lowered middle class, poverty, and extreme poverty. The highest percentage of victims has completed their basic education, followed by those who finish secondary education and then those who are illiterate or have not completed their basic education. This indicates that the level of education is a compelling factor in the victim's vulnerability. Moreover, there are causes and risk factors directly linked to almost all cases of trafficking in women, girls and adolescents for sexual exploitation. Gender inequality, discrimination, lack of opportunities, lack of empowerment, social acceptation of impunity, corruption of authorities. Issues faced by the attended population. According to the report, only 2% of cases have resulted in a conviction, which shows the high levels of impunity regarding this type of crimes. This data is linked to the fact that Mexico is the second most corrupt country. In a list of 59 countries members of the United Nations, the report indicates that there are two priority dimensions that the Mexican government needs to attend. The functionality of its security system and the structure of its judiciary system. To summarize, the main issues faced by the Red Alliance system target population are socioeconomic vulnerability, lack of information about their rights and the judiciary system, few or no economic resources to pay for the judicial process and the search for their disappeared relatives, physical remoteness of governmental offices, corruption and impunity of local authorities. Program goals and description. In 2006, the Cadillac launched an initiative called the Red Alert System to promote the collaboration with the three orders of government for the location and rescue of women, girls, boys and adolescents, victims of crimes related to trafficking in persons. Over time, the Red Alert System evolved to add diverse services and components to respond to the needs of the victims and their families given the proliferation of organized crime, violence against women, and the increasing number of disappearances of women, girls, and adolescents, mainly in Mexico. The Red Alert system offers protection and assistance to victims and or their families. It provides support for the prevention, prosecution, sanction, and eradication of crimes related to trafficking in persons and contributes to reducing the vulnerability of communities facing organized crime through empowering families and their immediate environment in parallel with the search for their disappeared relatives. The Red Alert System's work allows to prioritize the victims and their families' needs, as well as permanently monitor the work carried out by the government regarding crimes related to trafficking in persons, in order to reach access to justice, due diligence, integral reparation, the guarantee of non-repetition, and the immediate restoration of violated human rights. The guiding principles of the Red Alert system and the staff in charge of bringing assistance, attention and support are the following. Objectivity, respect, impartiality, professionalism, confidentiality, commitment and sensitivity with the highest ethical standards. Amongst the results achieved by the Red Alert system stand out the reunification of many families, the location and rescue of more than 1,300 victims, 
as well as transparency in cases of disappearance. Moreover, the existence of the Red Alert system has allowed to make visible and bring proofs of the dramatic manifestation of contemporary forms of slavery related to disappearances, femicides, and crimes related to trafficking in persons. Legal Assistance and Representation The Cadillac's Legal Assistance and Representation Service is part of the integral attention brought by the Red Alert system to families and victims of crimes related to trafficking in persons. The Cadillac's legal representation starts once a complaint is lodged. The complaint is lodged directly and immediately before the public prosecutor and could be of local or federal jurisdiction. According to the 2014 Statistical and Georeference Report, 66% of criminal proceedings have been initiated before local authorities. The majority of cases from Mexico attended by the Cadillac in 2014 were located in the capital city, Estado de México, Veracruz, and Tlaxcala. Although there are cases from at least 24 of the 32 federal entities of the Mexican Republic, in which most victims are girls between 12 and 18 years old, who live in poverty and extreme poverty, which increases their level of vulnerability. At the request of victims and their families, in 2014, the Red Alert system provided legal assistance and representation to 88% of the cases attended, which translated in 210 trials before federal and local courts. Case story, Guadalupe. Soy de Centroamérica. En 2008 conocí a una señora que con engaños me entregó con unos hombres y con documentos falsos me llevaron a México. Me llevaron hasta Nuevo Laredo, donde me obligaron a trabajar en un table dance. Ahí bailaba y me prostituía. Tenía que cumplir mi cuota, si no lo hacía, si no lo hacía me maltrataban, me humillaban, me golpeaban y me escupían. En 2012, un cártel de México quemó los tables y fui obligada a irme a Reynosa, a la zona de tolerancia, donde tenía que prostituirme. Todo el tiempo estaba vigilada, trabajaba 14 horas diarias. Cuando terminaba de trabajar, me quitaban hasta el último peso de lo que cobraba, solo me daban 100 pesos diarios para comer. Un día conocí a una señora que me ayudó a escapar y con la ayuda de varias personas me entregaron con la maestra Teresa Ulloa. Estoy muy agradecida con la coalición por llevar mi defensa legal y por atenderme en todo lo que necesito. 